Uh, my name is Tom Miller. I'm with the Cleveland Clinic, and welcome to the Career Connections Showcase. Uh, we're going to tell you a lot about some great programs today, and um, we will start off with just a little bit about the Ohio Distance Learning Association, who is sponsoring this today. So I'm going to hand it over to Dave Stein. Thank you. Uh, welcome, and uh, I really appreciate this opportunity. Uh, the, the Ohio DLA is a state chapter of the United States Distance Learning Associa Association. Uh, we are an organization of distance learning experts in the educational realm and consists mainly of schools, K-12 and higher ed, uh, educational service agencies, and content providers around the state. Um, we seek to advance the use of distance learning and bring equity to the table for students around the state. Um, uh, regarding access to programming like this, uh, content, uh, virtual field trips through some of our great providers and daily classes that a lot of our members uh, deliver. Okay, thank you, Dave. Yep. Uh, and uh, we're going to jump right in. All of the programming that content providers are sharing, sharing today uh, is are available through Ohio Distance Learning Association, or you can contact us uh, directly. So we're going to start off with Jordan from COSI. Jordan, let me unmute you. There you go. All right, thank you very much. Good afternoon, my name is Jordan Rader and I am the Senior Manager of the Interactive Video Conferencing Program here at COSI. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the programs that uh, we offer through distance learning that are geared for elementary school students. Um, to start, I'm gonna turn it over to my slides here and we can just do a quick little overview of some of the programs we offer. I'm not sure how good this particular graphic comes through over the screen here, but um, we're gonna be talking about two of our uh, wireless workshops, their um, introduction to coding and superhero science, and then we'll touch on just some of our um, STEM connection programs um, that are available for students in this age range. So let's first talk a little bit about our wireless workshops. Um, the ones that we're going to be focusing on today are again the intro to coding and superhero science, and a wireless workshop is what we call um, our single point connections, meaning that you are connected to um, COSI and we're connected just to you and there's no other schools involved. Now we also do have um, the STEM connections and those are our multi-point programs, meaning that um, COSI is the host and we are having many schools connect all at the same time. So we'll uh, separate the two types of programs so we get uh, hopefully get a better understanding of those. So first I want to talk a little bit about introduction to coding and it is basically what it sounds like. We are going to do a very brief introduction to computer programming um, using a program called Scratch. So um, you may be familiar with this. It was a product developed by MIT and um, through this program you can do simple um, drag and drop of different blocks and each block represents a given piece of code. And you can um, use it to uh, have Scratch the Cat here do lots of different things. You can create animations, you can have him do, um, you know, create videos, you can also program different um, games or things for that actually require input. And that's what we do. So we um, use this uh, platform to teach students how the, the basics of code using simple drag and drop blocks. So um, for example, we can see that the big blue triangle there in the center is actually gonna fit nicely into the orange piece up, uh, up at the top of the screen. So you can kind of see how um, these pieces are kind of designed to fit together visually. So you get that very clear uh, understanding of what goes together and what won't go together. Um, and this program, one of the things that we love about this program is that it is extremely adaptable, meaning we can do this for students as young as maybe third or fourth grade, all the way to high school students, depending on the level of um, uh, background knowledge that they have about coding. Um, and you know, how, uh, depending on how fast your students uh, move through this program, we can get to different aspects. So um, one of the things that we try to do in creating our video game is first, we program um, the inputs that allow you to 
move scratch the cat. So we program that the up arrow moves him up, the down arrow moves him down, left, right, etc. Uh, and then, okay, so we can move our character. What's next? Well, we need some obstacles. So we can create this little ball and we program that to move around the screen randomly. And then games are good if they have scoring systems. So the longer you stay in the game without touching the ball that's bouncing around the screen randomly, the higher your score. If the ball touches you, you lose a life. So those are some of the basics that we can get into. And depending on, again, the age of your students and how much experience they have with coding, they might get through some of those features, maybe get through all of them. Um, and if they get through all of them, then we can just keep going. We can add sound effects and backgrounds and make this game more co complex, more um, sprites as they're called, which are the characters that can move around on the screen. Um, one thing that's important to note about all of our programs, uh, or most of our programs at least, is that they do include pre and post visit activities. So the programs that we're um, talking about are generally an hour, some of them are an hour and a half, but with the pre and post visit activities, you can extend that learning um, before and after the program. So it's not just that one little isolated hour or 90 minutes. You can have things that you do beforehand leading up to and then things to help bring the program to a conclusion. And we include those with all of our programs. Next program I wanna talk about is a brand new one that we are launching this November. It's called Superhero Science. And it is all about our uh, favorite superheroes or some of our favorite superhero characteristics and how some of those things that we think might be supernatural can actually be explained with science. So here on the screen, you can see our Captain Elastic. And um, basically we're talking about how um, the things that make him special are actually just potential and kinetic energy that we deal with all the time. So this is a brand new program that we are launching talking all about um, the physics of, uh, of our world and how we can kind of use those to explain a lot of supernatural things that we see in our favorite um, superhero characters. So that's a new one that we're excited to launch here in uh, less than a month now. Um, so from there, I wanna move on next to our STEM connections. And we have two M's in our STEM. So we are science, technology, engineering, math, and medicine. We wanted that extra M in there because many of our programs deal heavily with medicine. So again, these are our multi-point programs, meaning you're connecting to uh, not just your school, Kosei is not connecting just to you, but to many schools, maybe four or five or even six schools at a time. Um, and these programs are all at predetermined dates and times. So um, for example, we're going to connect you to a hospital for a live knee surgery. And that's happening at a specific date and at a specific, specific time. We know when those are. You can look at our full calendar, see what date works for your um, with your schedule and then join in on one of those particular programs. Uh, we have a brand new program that we're excited to launch here. Uh, we're doing our first pilot of this program in uh, next Friday, so just over a week away now. We'll have another pilot in November, but then officially this program will launch in December. It's called Sports Medicine and we are working with doctors and uh, physician assistants and uh, different technologists at the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center at the Jameson Crane Institute there uh, for sports medicine. And we will be able to bring live surgeries into your classroom. So this sports medicine is uh, our newest one. Um, and basically it's, it's really fun because you don't necessarily even know what sports medicine surgery you're going to get because these are often things that happen right now. So you are, you're actively working in a sport the injury occurs and um, we need to have this surgery pretty soon. So um, you will be guaranteed a live surgery. It might be a rotator cuff, it might be an ACL repair, um, it might be something with the wrist or the ankle. Um, we will find out the morning of and COSI will find out just uh, right along with you and your students. And um, we'll be able to watch in live on this uh, surgery and go through all the steps with the surgeon, with the physician assistants, with the anesthesiologist, everyone in the room. And the, we'll have cameras in there and the uh, staff in the OR will be wearing microphones, meaning they can narrate the procedure live as they do it. So they'll be able to explain what tissues they're cutting through, why they're using these particular instruments, um, and your students will get to ask questions. Now, as I said, because this is a multi-point, we'll do round robin uh, style questions, meaning everyone will get a fair opportunity to ask. Um, so one uh, kind of loud and um, maybe 
trigger happy with their unmuting their microphone school won't be able to ask every question. Everyone will get a fair chance. And you'll get to ask those questions in real time and have them answered by the doctor. Um, one thing that we're excited about also is our new um, online teacher guides. So I mentioned that all of our programs include boxes of materials um, and online activities. And we're just relaunching um, all of our activities using a new guide that hopefully will be a lot uh, cleaner and easier for um, our teachers to use. So those will be rolling out in the coming weeks and months and we're very excited about those. Um, again here, this just highlights again the idea that even though our program, so this, these um, live surgeries, for example, they might go for um, you know, 60 minutes, maybe 90 minutes. But again, we wanna emphasize that uh, it goes much, uh, there's much more to it than just that. We have pre-visit and post-visit activities that we can uh, share with you, uh, that we actually send in a box to your school so that your students can do activities uh, with us. We send um, student booklets that give outlines of the procedure, have uh, glossary, definitions, diagrams, things like that, places for them to take notes that they can use during this procedure to help them, again, get a better understanding. One thing that we always like to highlight is um, the career exploration. That's what we're talking about here today. Um, the doctors make it a point every surgery that they do with us to explain that, um, you know, they are just one piece of this massive puzzle that is all coming together in, you know, this really interesting and unique way to make this procedure happen. So everyone is important. The, the nurses that might have a four-year degree, the technologists who might have a two-year degree, um, the anesthesiologists, the um, the surgeons themselves have, you know, extended degrees. Um, so they really like to emphasize the nature of, of the work that they're doing and the teams that they work with and the different uh, education levels needed to do each of those programs. Um, so if you're interested in reserving one of our programs, uh, we have a new reservation system that we are in love with. We hope you will like it as well. Uh, if you go to uh, this website here, it's cosi.org slash IVC. Um, you can start your reservation there. If you're doing a, if you're interested in one of the wireless workshops, which is just you and COSI, um, you can use our automated system to um, find dates and times that we are available. And um, the, the, so this, the system will show you, uh, okay, if we wanna do it on this particular date, it'll show you what times we are available. So you can reserve right into that spot right now. Uh, we hope that's a lot easier than having to go through back and forth. Well, can you do it on this Monday? No, we're busy, but we can do it on this Monday. Okay, well, we're busy that Monday. So hopefully um, we, we've taken out some of the back and forth from that and we're excited about that. And then again, if you're looking at our uh, wire, or excuse me, our STEM connections, those are at pre-scheduled date and time. So you can view our entire calendar, see when those surgeries are, see when our different programs are and pick one that will fit in with your schedule. Last thing I will throw up is just our contact information here again. My name was Jordan. Uh, the best way to reach me is at videoconferencing at cosi.org. And again, there is our website if you're interested in look, learning more about our programs or making a reservation. And I think with that, I'm about out of time. So I will turn it back over to Tom. Thank you. Thanks, Jordan. Uh, we are going to switch then to Info Ohio. So Kathy, you ready to go? Go for it. Kathy, I just I'm mind. sorry, I had to unmute myself. My name is Kathy Cooper. I'm an instructional team specialist with Info Ohio. And what we're going to do today is take a look at some of the resources that Info Ohio provides for Ohio schools to transform student learning. Uh, Info Ohio is Ohio's pre-K-12 digital library, and it is free to all Ohio students, teachers, and parents. We have four primary services that we provide for our teachers and our students and parents. First of all, we license a collection of instructional digital content that is, has been selected to support the Ohio learning standards, and that's all free develop uh, free web-based instructional tools that help students learn and grow. We do provide PD and support to Ohio's pre-K-12 educators 
to help them integrate technology and adopt strategies that positively impact student learning. And probably the service that we're most known for is supporting an integrated library automation system for more than 2,200 schools, supporting 1.1 million students statewide. And that's been around about 20 years. And as time has gone on, we've added the other services. Info Ohio uses something called geolocation as a behind the scenes step in the process for logging you into the Info Ohio site, which makes it really easy for students, teachers, and parents to access the resources. That means that when you are in Ohio, you will be automatically logged into www.infoohio.org. No additional password is needed. However, if you are out of the state, you will need to manually log in using your district's username and password or the statewide username and password. And if you're not sure, you can click in the corner to find your password. And if you need more help, you can always visit support at infoohio.org. The thing we're going to look at today are the middle school resources that are available for you. And we're going to look at three different research sources, iSearch, iWonder, and World Book Student. To access any website, you start at the grade band page. In the corner for each resource, there'll be a little gray eye, and that gray eye does provide information such as the URLs for easy access, and it provides you with links to your Google Classroom or website, training and support. And as you're preparing to use this with your students, you might want to take a look at the I Wonder Genius Hour Teacher Guide for ideas how to help your students get started. There's also a blank worksheet that you can use with your students so they can go ahead and collect the information as they're doing their research. The Genius Hour provides resources, standards, and information plan. In this plan, students can explore info, uh, I wonder, and then they can dig into other things on a particular topic like exploring careers, which is what we're going to look at today. <clears throat> I wonder was built around the idea of a question format. Each question includes additional information. And as you scroll down the page, you're going to find a question. Do you want to know what you want to be when you grow up? If you click on that, you will find that there are four career areas to explore. Do you want to know what jobs are right for you? Do you want to learn more about different jobs? Do you want to prepare for your future? And our newest addition, do you want to learn more about information technology careers? So those are four different areas that are under that particular resource. In each category, students are provided with websites that give them information and let them explore and investigate further. Here you can find, if you click on, do you want to know what jobs are right for you, you can find that there is a link to the career cluster inventory from Ohio Means Jobs and other resources that students can use as they explore careers. <clears throat> as they investigate, you can have them use the Genius Hour lesson and they can track three different careers perhaps that they decide to explore. So we're gonna take a little bit of a look at the career cluster. It leads quickly to the spot. As soon as you click on it, you go right to the link and it um, lets students complete the inventory and they can find out perhaps some careers that they might be interested in exploring. And in the middle school, this is a topic that's really um, very important for students to begin to explore the types of things they're interested in. To continue with your Genius Hour lessons, students can more deeply explore one of the careers they've chosen. So there is a fifth alternative under this category, and that's do you want to discover more? They click on that, and that will take them to our second research source, which is iSearch. iSearch allows students to find information from their school library and almost all of the Info Ohio databases. It's kind of our answer to Google. All the information is collected in one spot, so students do not have to search in multiple databases. They can type in their career term, and they can find lots of topic types of information on a topic. So for example, here I'm gonna um, search for coding careers. And I found lots of articles about coding and coding jobs. So when I click the button on the right hand side of the screen that says view and download, that will open up the actual article. 
I can access the article in a PDF format, I can look at it in HTML, I can do all sorts of things with the article on the right hand side of the screen is a menu of options, I can save it to my Google Classroom, my Google Drive, I can get a correct citation for it, I can create a permanent permalink, I can email it, so there's lots of options when students actually find the article. When I click on the PDF full text, I get the actual article from the magazine itself. I have all of the, uh, the subheadings, the main headings, the pictures, the entire article. So to continue with my Genius Hour lesson, I would go back to the home page and click on the grade six through eight button. Under that button, another resource that I might use is World Book Student. I select World Book, and teachers can browse in World Book, explore the World Book Educator tools, which are listed at the top, and then I can search for an article or some sort of piece of information. This time I'm going to put in the article or the term careers, which is a very broad term. The careers article has several features, including information on getting a job, planning a career, and content and media. So I'm going to choose media, and under media, I will find some videos about different careers, including a short video on becoming a computer programmer. <clears throat> One last resource that we have recently added to the Info Ohio webpage is something called career planning. You return to the home page and you select the words all resources. Under that you will find something that says career exploration and planning. If you click on that, you will find that this page has been designed for librarians, teachers, guidance counselors, and anyone who is responsible for guiding and implementing career awareness, exploration, and planning instruction. The resources that are listed in this are by grade band, pre-K 5, 6 through 8, and then a 9 through 12. These resources have been developed with our partner sites, which includes the Ohio Department of Education Career Connections, Ohio Means Jobs, and the Ohio Department of Higher Education. The resources have been aligned to the ODE Career Connections Foundation, which is being uh, recommended across the state. This fall, we are also providing, going to be creating a series of blogs that will talk about the career resources, how you can use them in your classroom, how you can integrate them into your current curriculum. Okay, as I finish up, you can see these are the three categories. I would like to remind you that we do have a couple of other things that will look, let, help you extend your search across uh, InfoS Ohio's content and stay up to date with the most recent changes. Educator Tools is a new resource we added last year. It has thousands, literally thousands, of standard-based online resources. You can search for lesson plans, content, you can look by grade level, subject, item type, it just depends on what you're looking for, and it is found at the bottom of any of the Info Ohio pages and also at the quick links at the very bottom under teachers. Secondly, you can also stay connected with Info Ohio and be informed about all the new things that are going on. Subscribe to our listserv, you can follow us on social media, and you can even sign up for our newsletter. You'll know right away what's new and improved with Info Ohio, and we do change things and add things frequently, so it's kind of a nice idea to get connected and see what's going on. If you need more information, or you have a question, please feel free to contact us at support.infoohio.org. So have fun engaging your middle school students in career exploration, and please, please feel free to use all of our free resources. Thank you very much for listening to my content, and we're back to, uh, I believe, our next presenter. Jerry, you're going to take it away. We're going to the uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame. Yep, I didn't know if you were going to chime in there or not, Tom. So I was actually, uh, that uncomfortable silence there that was, uh, that was there. Great. But, uh, I know. Uh, let me just say a good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jerry Shock. I'm the Director of Youth and Education here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And I have to be honest, I mean, you just look at like Coastline, Cleveland Museum of Natural History, and Info Ohio, Ohio DLA. 
just so you guys know that you guys have uh, in your state uh, some of the very best content, not only in the country, but in the world. Uh, some of the very best content providers across the country are in the state of Ohio. And so obviously we're a little bi biased. I'm an Ohioan, but, uh, but certainly the, the proof is out there that there's just some amazing, amazing rich content that's out there. So take advantage of everybody that you're hearing from today. Uh, they're the very best across the country and all over the world. Uh, as for us, um, I, I've been here for almost 20 years now, so I've been involved in video conferencing for, for, for quite a long time. And so uh, we do a wide variety of programs from uh, math and football and, and, and science and football and all kinds of different things. But by far our most popular program that we offer here at the Pro Football mm -hmm. of Fame is careers in the NFL. And uh, so um, you ask your students, you know, how many of them want to be a pro athlete or especially in middle school still, they're still holding on to that hope. We don't dash the dreams, but we kind of do, uh, to be honest, is it's only 0.02% of, of high school football players will ever make an NFL roster. And by those statistics, if you look at the ACT scores, you're about seven times more likely to score perfect on your ACT than you are to make it in the NFL. So it's a, it's, it's pretty difficult to make it there, but that doesn't mean you can't obtain one of these jobs behind the scenes. Uh, that are just as fun and just rewarding. Uh, myself, for example, I mean, being at the Pro Football of Fame for 19 years, growing up playing sports, loving sports. Uh, believe it or not, I think people think I'm crazy because I've been at the Pro Football of Fame for 19 years. I went to the University of Mount Union, so since we're Ohio educators here, we know about the University of Mount Union and their, their dynasty of football. I never played a down of organized football. Uh, I played baseball, basketball, soccer, and golf, but nonetheless, I've got a job here at the Hall of Fame that uh, I've loved, been, been in love with for, for 19 years. And so, uh, it's just an opportunity for your students to capitalize on, on their interests and their passion, and they can relate it to a career in the NFL. And so what we do is, is just like you'll see any other content provider, there's pre-materials, post-materials, there's the interactions, there's ways that we engage uh, students by showing videos, photos, uh, asking questions. That's all the same, a standard across pretty much any content provider uh, that's there. And so um, but one of the things we like to do, I'm going to go ahead and pop up my screen here. You'll see it pop up here in just a second as we share screen. And you will see, so we'll walk them through. So today we connected on, on Long Island with some schools in Long Island. So there's, you know, we'll kind of show them where they're at and kind of zoom in at the Hall of Fame. We take them for a quick 30 second tour around the Hall of Fame uh, to get them inside. But then we have, uh, what's pretty cool is we have uh, a nice Prezi here that we go through and, and, and some interesting resources that we have here to highlight some of these careers that are in and around the National Football League. Uh, and again, going back to what we said, the two most popular jobs that students think of are players and coaches. And so, and there's, you know, millions of reasons why they, they would want to choose that because of the millions of dollars and millions of fans uh, that, that, that watch them. But the fact of the matter is the average NFL career, even if they are good enough to make in the NFL, it's only about two and a half years. Uh, so uh, while, you know, making five, $600,000 for a couple of years is great money, it's not going to sustain them for the next 40, 50 years of life. And so it's important that even if they are good enough to make in the NFL, that statistics show that, they're going to need a job anyway. So we might as well go into something we're going to love to do for the next 40, 50 years of our life. And so you see the NFL head coaches, uh, you know, a lot of people say, Hey, I want to be a coach too. Well, if they looked at what coaches like John Harbaugh, the coach of the Baltimore Ravens uh, put in, um, you know, you look at, he wakes up nine, 5 50 AM and goes to sleep at 1130 at night and sleeps on the office couch. And so uh, there's a great ESPN article that talks about his day to day throughout the season that just kind of highlights those things. Some statistics we share with middle school students uh, and just some of the same things that I share with you guys, about a million high school football players, according to the NC2A, 256 draft picks, and, and uh, that equates to about 0.02%. That's uh, one in every 5,000. So we go through, we'll interact. I mean, we could do this program with 20 different schools in the same, or 20 different classrooms in the same school and do almost 20 different programs because there's so many job opportunities out there that we only scratch the surface on, on those jobs. So we have some interesting resources. The San Francisco 49ers put some quick snippets of the athletic trainer, social media, player engagement, game day entertainment, football operations, some of those things uh, that are out there. And I'll skip ahead just for the sake of time. We show some interesting uh, social media techniques and, and things that the teams use to engage fans. Things that your students already do is to build their brand, their own brand. They're just building a brand of a football team. Uh, and so we show them like uh, uh, the Panthers did a couple years ago. They did the lyrics to the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air as a kind of a hidden message in their tweets over three days to again, engage fans and things like that. And so, uh, and, and as we go to the end here, uh, you see some of the obscure, obscure jobs that are in the NFL, some jobs you might not ever think of. We went through each NFL team's media guide and pulled out some, some unique jobs are out there. And if you go through here, you see all these jobs, seamstress, art director, pet band director, sports science manager, parking director, landscape manager, a tax manager, driver, director of construction management, plumber, psychologist, pastry chef, pastor, curator, carpenter, engineer, mechanic, chiropractor, electrician, steam fitter. There's just so many jobs 
in and around these NFL teams. And so what we like to do is also go into uh, something, uh, it's called a media guide, something the NFL teams put together every year. There's one done from every NFL city. And so this is the Cleveland Browns, and dare I say the AFC North leading Cleveland Browns, uh, which I think I can hear even though everybody, nobody has uh, a microphone access today that's connecting in here, I can still hear the gasp of that, that the Browns are actually uh, leading the AFC North right now. I'm a Steeler fan, so just to throw that out there right now. So you guys may never connect with me again because of that, but that's okay. Uh, We're really bad this year, so it's okay. Um, But what you can see is what's really cool about this media guide, it actually uh, provides an active directory. Uh, of the staff that's actually working for the Cleveland Browns. And, and, and maybe some of, you, some of the adults, that are, I mean, the, the teachers that are tuned in might not realize just how many people work for these NFL teams. Uh, as you look at the management, the coaching staff, to, to football support, to football operations, the Browns Foundation, for brand development, community relations. I mean, just all the different areas, corporate partnerships, ticket sales, uh, ticket operations, just so many jobs in and around these NFL teams for every interest. I mean, if you want to be, if you want to go into, uh, I'm trying to see if they have their medical staff on here. Most of these teams do have their medical staff here, uh, but uh, we can go down here. Yeah, look at this, um, uh, athletic trainers that you see there. Um, and we can go through and go on and on about these different jobs. Uh, one other resource that we like to provide and show students as well is, uh, if you just see what I did here, I searched NFL careers. You scroll down, you'll see a website, teamworkonline.com. So if there's any educators out there that are looking, out of, looking to get out of public education and, and look for a job, here's job openings in the NFL. Uh, these aren't all the job openings, but there are some. And this, this is a company that's actually based out of Shaker Heights in Cleveland. So uh, they are an HR firm for uh, NFL teams. It's the same thing with Major League Baseball, NHL. So you could search uh, NHL careers and, and the same website would pop up just under that. But what's really neat is you can actually go in, your students can go in and click on marketing and look at, Here's the San Francisco 49ers. They have a social media producer position open right now. You can apply for it right now, but students can actually dive into, and especially when we get to middle school, especially in high school, they can really dive into depth of seeing what, what the job responsibilities are, what education is needed, and those sorts of things. So there's all kinds of resources that are out there to, to, to point your students, to get them access and, and get them insight into a lot of these career opportunities in and around the NFL. And so uh, one thing we always like to share here at the Hall of Fame is obviously we focus on education. If you're gonna work for 40 years of your life, that's what education is gonna allow you the opportunity to do is to go into something you're gonna love to do for the next 40 years of your life, like myself and like all of you educators out there. You didn't go into it to be rich, neither did I working for a museum. Uh, We went in it because we're passionate about helping the next generation take those steps in life, uh, the next steps in life to to, to be productive in their life. And so, uh, and then also we talk about the values of what football teaches. Uh, We believe football is the ultimate team sport. I love all sports, but football is just so unique because it's a group of people of all different shapes and sizes and colors and skills and giftings and abilities, and they come together in love and unity in pursuit of one common goal. And so if you think about if we take that same philosophy in the teams that we play on in life, whether it's our families, whether it's our communities, whether it's our schools, whether it's our churches, whether it's our scout groups, whether it's our band, orchestra, whoever it is, we take that same philosophy that, hey, I want to use my gifts and abilities to make everyone else around me better we can make some positive changes on the teams we play on. So I see we're at the end of our time. I uh, just want to conclude by saying, just check us out, profootballhf.com or such, Pro Football Hall of Fame Education. All of our programs are free, uh, no matter whether you do one program or 100 programs. Uh, we're booking up quickly. We're probably going to have 500 connections this year. So uh, uh, come check us out and uh, make sure you check out all the great content that's uh, coming your way today. So thank you very much. Tom, back to you, buddy. All right. Thanks, Jerry. And uh, we're going to go now to the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. Lee, I've uh, unmuted you. I see that you have unmuted me. Hello, everybody. I'm standing here in my room full of a lot of random stuff at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. I'm not alone. I got my fabulous camera guy over there, that skinny Vinny hanging out, helping me wrangle that camera. Uh, Jerry, you have just convinced me that I chose the wrong career, despite the fact that working at a museum, that I am working to make the world a better place, all of the wonderful things you just said to wrap up your talk, but I do not have an executive pastry chef on my payroll, and that was one of the jobs you just listed, so dude, I totally chose. (laughs) 
the wrong career. Anyway, uh, hello, welcome to the Natural History Museum. You guys over there giving the thumbs up, right? <laughs> welcome to the Natural History Museum. We have a ton of different programs here because we had a merger occur back in the old days of, let's see, 2006, I think, that the Health Museum of Cleveland moved in here and said, hi, we're used to teaching puberty and drugs and stuff like that, health classes, but we're moving into this building full of dinosaurs and How's that going for you? So now we have this really weird combination of programs, the health programs that are the offshoot from the Health Museum, and also all of these programs about the science that happens here. For my little 10 minute moment of fame, wait, I'm double checking. Yeah, 4.15, okay. For my 10 minute chunk of this uh, talk today, I thought I would show you a couple of targeted middle school programs that do have tons of career connections, but also tackle the tricky topics. That's right, folks. We're not scared to talk about climate change. In fact, the um, tagline for this is there's no debate in this program. Instead, what we do is we discuss various scientific principles that a kid can replicate in your classroom. We hope you do. We show them how to do these scientific experiments. And then with any luck, they go back and you, they do it in your classroom. Or you can do it along with us because we do send you a little box of stuff. Here's a little box. Box, this example. It's my lovely co-host. She hangs out for all the health programs. They have a little box of stuff like Jordan's crew was talking about, and that way you don't have to worry about scrounging around finding things. So in a climate change program, how are you going to make it hands-on and, and keep these kids interactive? Well, some of the stuff in the kit's handy for that. Example, we're talking about being able to measure or at least get a feel for the weather that's been happening for centuries past, eons before humans were around writing stuff down. And we've got a couple of time machines that are available to us on this planet. One time machine is a tree. And if you know anything about trees, you know that the growth rings of a tree indicate each year it's putting on a new layer of that growing cellular tissue. And in case you've never seen a tree in your life, because we do teach to some locations that don't have trees, um, we do send a little piece of actual tree in the kit, but we also send a piece of petrified tree. And that way we can ask the kids, hey, do you think that a petrified tree that's millions of years old can tell you any kind of information about the weather. Well, think about it, folks. What do those tree rings indicate is how the weather was affecting that tree's growth. So if it's a tree, a kind of tree that likes a lot of rain and it wasn't growing very well, maybe there wasn't that much rain. Now, I'll show you a little slice of our petrified wood here that you get in your kit from our paleobotany department. Now, hold on. I got to adjust the light because I was fooling around with some other stuff. There we go. And there. Perfect. Now you can see the rings. So if you counted those rings and you started comparing the width of those rings, you'd be taking a look at the weather conditions during that tree's life. And that tree is, well, wait for it. Hold on. This is one of my favorite silly things to do with my name tag. In the Carboniferous period, that's my name, Lee. And the Carboniferous period was 337 million years ago, give or take a few. Huh? How am I doing? Also, <laughs> also in the kit, uh, other things that have rings would be ice cores. No, we don't have an actual ice core in the kit because we can't figure out how to not make them melt. But we do show some really cool jobs because if you like cold weather, man, you can join a team of scientists who go to places like Greenland and drill way down inside of a huge glacier to pull up a great big chunk of ice called an ice core using a big scary pipe like that. But the amazing thing is you can learn a ton of stuff from that ice core, including the chemistry of the ice and the gases trapped in the ice itself. So when you're looking at things from the kit there, some of them are replicas. Whoops, like here's our replica. Let me get that focused for you. Our replica ice core. And we're asking the kids, what do you think this dust could have come from? Or where do you think those bubbles could have come from? And that way you've got some nifty hands-on items to keep everybody focused on the discussion. All right, so there's one way to tackle climate change is just talk about the chemistry of it and how these different greenhouse gases affect the way, the dynamics, the thermodynamics of our atmosphere. However, there's also health concerns. So what I'm going to do is jump out of one PowerPoint and jump into another. This is always perilous when you're working with ancient technology like this laptop in front of me. We'll see if it behaves, though. Hey, there it goes. And when you're talking about health conditions, that's a whole separate thing, a whole separate class for us. And what we're doing is discussing ways that different aspects of climate change might affect your health. Now, this could be a pretty boring discussion. I'll grant you if you're just like, blah, blah, blah lung issues, heart issues, whatever. But the way you kick it up a little bit of a notch is you have the kids investigate their own insides, right? So don't tell me with your voice, anyone, because I won't hear you anyway, but you could try. Uh, but just think about, have you ever learned how, oops, sorry, how large your heart is supposed to be? 
If you're doing this, yeah, all the kids seem to know that always. So your heart's supposed to be about the size of your fist, right? However, there are certain heart conditions that can cause a heart to enlarge. So we take a look at a plastic heart, but then we also have a real specimen that has been plastinated, and there it is, sitting next to the real heart. There we go. So real one, not real one. And we have a video that we run that's about a minute and a half long. A couple of my friends here at the museum goofing around pretending that they're suffering from the heat and the heat is so terrible. And they mentioned that one of their friends had a heart attack and they think that it was because the temperature has gone up so much maybe she just couldn't handle it anymore. And we asked the kids things like, well, you run around in the hot heat, right? You're okay. But can you think of anybody that might suffer from the heat and they can't escape? They're trapped in their apartment maybe or they can't afford to move and they can't, yeah, yeah. So by seeing that actual organ and discussing the fact that some people have pre-existing conditions, maybe your grandparents, you know, people that you really care about, that this kind of shift in the climate is going to physically affect them, that really brings that message close to home. So that's how we keep everybody engaged, is either stuff that comes to your school or, or discussions with the kids or things they're actually doing in the classroom. Now, when we are also discussing this whole career idea, my friends, I got a brand new gig going on. I'm super excited about this. I'm going to jump over to our, that was the wrong button. Take a look at some hearts here for a second while I hit the right button. Hey, there we go. And this is our website, a page that is specifically dedicated to a brand new thing we're doing this year. These career programs, absolutely free, folks, da -da -da, which is kind of unique for us because FYI, we do have a, char a fee for our programs. We get a lot of grants out there, but there is a fee, 140 bucks covers an hour-long program. We got all kinds of discounts and stuff, but this is cool because the Northeast Ohio Sewer Dist Regional Sewer District, hey, helped to fund some of this programming, and we are doing interviews with people who work for the Sewer District, people who work here in environmental jobs here at the museum. This nice lady researches dung beetles in Ohio. Did you know that Ohio has dung beetles? I didn't until I met her, but we're also interviewing all of our explorer lecturers. Guys, this is Dr. Johannes Haile Selassie. He just discovered a brand new hominin that completely changed the way that our timelines were arranged in our textbooks. Guys, this is Dr. Don Johansson. He's the guy that discovered Lucy. Australopithecus afarensis, you know her, you love her. Dude discovered her. He was our boss at this museum back in 1974. Yeah. So I get to interview these guys, and you get to watch me do it, and they're all geared toward the how did you get this job. So if you take a look at that listing, and you're like, ooh, these are cool, but I can't make it because they're all Fridays at 1. I know, sometimes you just can't match times. Don't worry. They're all being recorded. There's an archive. You can go watch the archive and see those programs, and then email us any questions that you have. So that's a really nifty new thing that we're very specifically talking to these famous scientists about how did you get your job, which is pretty fun. So if you poke around on our website a little bit and you're like, dude, this all is great, how can I possibly find out more? Why do I keep hitting the wrong button? Sorry, there's some hearts again. It's because I'm all excited this afternoon. It's right here on our website. Look, there's a big word that says learn. Nice, I want to learn stuff. So if you're a school, you click school programs. Inspires a very specific, pro if you're a homeschool parent, et cetera. You see what we're talking about? So you just click school programs, boom. That will open up a whole chart of all the different ways that we get programming to you, including this venue, video conference. So there you go. That's how we like to do things around here is throw a lot of weirdo specimens at you and keep those kids engaged. So my name's Lee. Thanks for listening to me. And I'm passing it off because it's exactly 4.15. And take it over to you, Tom. Bye. Thank you, Lee. Well, uh, uh, thank you. I'm Tom Miller. I'm with the Cleveland Clinic, and my head is cutting off. Sorry about that, folks. All right, there we go. And I am going to be talking to you today about Cleveland Clinic's programs for middle and high schoolers, and actually mostly middle schoolers, because this is the middle schooler session. The Cleveland Clinic has a variety of programs, and we're going to start out with our worldwide classroom. And so everybody knows that there's a doctor and a nurse that works at the hospital, but there's a lot of other positions uh, that are supportive of the healthcare system. And so we go into and explore those. These are free programs that we run on Tuesday mornings at nine o'clock. We have a full schedule, which I'll share with you in just a minute. It is a interactive session. We generally have the students do some kind of activities and we highlight a whole bunch of different uh, careers here at, at the Cleveland Clinic. And as an example, uh, just two weeks ago, we had a nutritionalist who uh, was a leading the students and playing a game to try to figure out what kinds of, how many serving sizes are in 
uh, uh, different kinds of products, especially geared towards teens. Uh, so they, they see these products, they understand it. Uh, and I'll let you all try to figure out how many serving sizes are in a classic bag of Lay's. But we use Zoom technology just like this webinar and we do a series of activities where we also uh, have them do interactive polling and we do then open up for questions and we do live questions with the caregivers that we feature. Uh, for our upcoming session, I'll give you a quick example of some of the activities that we do. We have a session coming up with a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, a speech therapist, uh, Oh, uh, sorry, I, I was going and then I stopped. A rec therapist and then a therapy assistant. And one of the activities that they'll do with the students, and I would like you to do it, will take 30 seconds. If you've got a piece of paper and a pen handy somewhere, just turn it over and I am left-handed, but I'm gonna ask you to be right-handed if you're left-handed and be left-handed if you're right-handed. And if you could, using your non-dominant hand for 30 seconds here, and I'll pause, I'm gonna ask you to write this sentence out with your non-dominant hand, I'll do it with you. So I am writing this with my non-dominant hand. So everybody, I'm, give it a shot, see what you can do. All right, so, oh, look at Lee, she jumped on right away. Uh, I wish I had a document. A lot of fun. Actually, she's got great handwriting for a non-dominant hand. That's pretty impressive. She must be ambidextrous. Uh, thank you, Lee. Um, so uh, this is one of the, the activities they demonstrate to understand students, uh, help students understand the patients that either have um, motor skill issues, they may have a cognitive issue that is causing them to have difficulties with writing, and then obviously, as they, have, they are different types of therapists, they would explain how they would go about improving uh, a, a patient's uh, situation when they have a, a difficulty with handwriting or with fine motor skills. So that's just something that we do to uh, help students understand and build some empathy. Uh, we are always focusing that our caregivers that are presenting are going to tell stories, they're gonna be humorous, they're gonna be gross, they're gonna make kids uh, feel empathy for the, 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 the profession that they're in. We have a big lineup set up and you can join Worldwide Classroom for free. You can start, uh, you can come to any or all of them. Uh, this first one that, that you could join is next week. It's a nurse practitioner and then a whole series of sessions that we have lined up. The popular ones are our surgeons. Uh, Dr. Modlin will be doing a kidney surgery uh, in October 29th and then we also have some really interesting um, sessions set up towards uh, in February where we're focusing on esports our uh, sports medicine physician actually is working with the University of Akron and their esports team and if you don't know what esports is tune in because it's very fascinating um, it's a big industry and it's also you'd be surprised how many injuries are actually occurring from people who are playing video games all day so we hope you can join us. We also do hot topics. And these are sessions that are focused on a health issue, but they're also led by Cleveland, Cl Cleveland Clinic clinicians. So the students meet them and understand the different topics based on also their career. So for example, next week, it's all about pain. We have a physician assistant who's talking about the opioid crisis and alternative to pain management. So a variety of different ways that you can interact with Cleveland Clinic and also those all those hot topics we have question and answer. Almost all of them have some kind of interactive activity for the students to do during the session. We have another program called Adventures in Health Science and Medicine. This is a 10-week case study that students uh, participate in. It's generally a one class in a, a school, 25 students. You get this giant kit. Students actually interact with 19 different caregivers, 19 different careers within this program and they have uh, science experiments that focus on the foundational concepts of diagnosing patients, and then there's an application of that. And we have uh, a, the whole program culminates with a capstone project where the students are giving an authentic real world problem, which they have to then solve, and they are then judged by their own peers. We use the webinar technology so that students present to a group of judges, and then they switch and they become the judges and the other students present. Students think that's one of the best things 
Uh, that starts uh, in uh, January. We start registration middle of October. Uh, there are generally 16 slots for that program uh, that we do. We also have a program called Expressions. Uh, this is uh, where research and, and creativ creativity meet. The research that is done here at Cleveland Clinic is offered up to students. Students then take that research and they do their own creative interpretation of that research, either into art, language, or math. And it is a completely authentic experience. Critical thinking is, is, is absolutely part of the process. And the work that the students do is incredible. And we are actually tying it in this year with our worldwide classroom so that the students can interact with clinicians that are in those areas. So for example, uh, Dr. Modlin, who will be talking about kidney surgery, is also gonna be talking about all of the issues that are prevalent with diabetes and how those lead to issues with the kidneys. So the students can actually have an interaction with that, that caregiver and then go back and look at the research and do their interpretations. And that is a program where students actually, um, if they're uh, selected, they win prizes and also the teachers that do the program with them if their students are selected to win prizes. And it's usually cash prizes or gift, gift cards. So a uh, variety of great programs. Again, all of Cleveland Clinic programs are free and our website uh, is available. Enroll and find out about it. You absolutely are welcome to contact me if you have questions. We're real excited to have uh, you join us and do our programming. So uh, that is uh, the end of my session and we're actually just about uh, to the end here and we have, uh, I see we have some Question, maybe a question coming in. We will uh, give you some time for questions. We'll also, uh, I want to just switch it back to Dave for just a second here and ask him to wrap us up. And I'm going to share a slide for you, Dave. Hold on one second here. Thank you very much, Tom. You're welcome. And let me put back up here the Ohio DLA intro slide. Thank you. Hey, I really, <clears throat> really appreciate all the panelists today. This is captivating stuff. Um, and it's a little bit frightening to think that we're going to be working for 50 years, Jerry. Um, so yes, we better love what we do for a living. Um, there is a project underway right now uh, between the Ohio Distance Learning Association, that's the group that brought this uh, to you today, the Management Council of the Ohio Education Computer Network, they oversee the ITCs in the state, the Broadcast Educational Media Commission, BEMC, they run the state video conferencing bridge, but they also distribute media for all the, the uh, PBS uh, TV station affiliates around the state. We're working on a program to bring Zoom to all schools in the state at a very, very uh, reduced price, 93% off of what it typically is. So pro licenses are going to end up being $10 a year. Normally it's $15 a month. Um, the goal is to give, to, to bring equal opportunity to all students, no matter where you are. That includes homeschoolers as well. Um, I put a link into the chat. Hopefully everybody can see that. There is a link to join our organization as a free associate member. We've expanded our membership this year. And that will allow you to receive announcements of great programs like today's. And all of these, uh, the providers today that presented are part of our organization. So you will see communication come out regarding things like this on a regular basis. Thank you so much to everybody. This is fascinating. Thanks, Tom.